Um, yeah, first off, I, uh, I want to say that we're thinking about the people uh, in Hurricane Florence's wake, uh, people in the Carolinas. Um, I know coastal folks don't need mainlanders uh, telling them how to handle a storm like this, uh, but I would be remiss if I did not tell folks, um, please listen to your local officials. Please uh, encourage people to follow all local emergency orders. Um, our thoughts and our prayers are with the people who are in the path of this hurricane. We're going to keep monitoring this storm, and Congress stands ready to assist the people who will be in these affected areas uh, in any way that we can. Um, now, we're here uh, because we're doing some really important things on the floor today. Uh, this minibus conference report is a national security bill. It is a veterans bill. It provides critical funding to rebuild our military infrastructure. It strengthens our electrical grid, and it supports our nuclear weapons programs. It puts historic resources behind the reforms that we made to improve health care at the VA. That is a critical part of our Better Way agenda that is getting executed and implemented today. And I cannot stress this enough. This represents a return to our most basic responsibility around here, passing appropriation bills. Since we are doing this, this is the first time since 2007 that the House and the Senate will send multiple appropriation measures to the president's desk on time. So we are actually seeing a restoration of regular order, which is something that is extremely important to make the House and the Senate work well. This is how it always should be done. But it hasn't been this way for a long time. So it really is a big step in the right direction. And we're going to build on this. Lastly, this has been another good week, a great week for economic news. Yesterday, we got news that median household income has increased to a record high. This comes on the heels of Friday's report showing wages had their biggest increases since 2009. The bottom line is this. Americans are earning more. Their finances are improving. People are better off. This is what matters. We can do a lot of here, work here in Washington, but what really counts is how these policies improve people's lives. And here we see yet another sign that we are on the right track, that the policies we have put in place in this Congress are indeed improving people's lives. You can learn more about this by going to better.gop. Any questions? Baraboo. Me and help me celebrate the Packers' victory last week. That's why I called on you. What you <laughs> Thank you for bringing it up. More questions. I'll bring it. <laughs> um, I wanted to touch on something that you talked with Wisconsin politics about last night, um, and that's the erosion of trust in, in uh, public confidence in uh, civil institutions. Um, first, uh, I wanted to ask you about the Pope. He said that he's going to convene a meeting in February, uh, the Bishops' Conference, to discuss prevention of sexual abuse. Um, you're a prominent Catholic, I wondered what your reaction would be on that. And then um, also I wanted to ask you about the president. Uh, he had a tweet this morning that really challenged um, a report that said 3,000 people died in Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. And he said that that was really just uh, the Democrats out to make him look bad by revising that number. He says only 6 to 18 people died. You've been to Puerto Rico in the aftermath of that storm. What do you think yeah, happened yeah, the, there? The casualties don't make a person look bad. That's not... Uh, so I have no reason to dispute these numbers. I was in Puerto Rico after the hurricane. It was devastated. This was a horrible storm. Uh, I toured the entire island, and it was, it's, a, it's an isolated island that lost its infrastructure and its power for a long time. P you couldn't get to people for a long time on the island because roads were washed out, power was gone, and, and the casualties uh, mounted for a long time. So I have no reason to dispute those numbers. Um, those are just the facts of, of what happens when a horrible hurricane hits an isolated place like an island. Um, the earlier point you made, um, yeah, this is very disturbing. I, I, uh, first, we need to think about the victims, and we need to make sure that the victims uh, get the help they need. Second, uh, as a practicing Catholic, the last thing that this needs to, to be is become relegated to a fight between the Catholic left and the Catholic right. This needs to be elevated to truth and justice. That means cleanse the problem with total transparency and total accountability so that the healing can begin and so that the church can renew itself. So it's a very disturbing development, uh, and I pray and hope that the church gets this right. I think Cardinal DiNardo, uh, who's, who's the head of the USCCB, who's the Galveston-Houston Cardinal, uh, 
from what I can see, is on the right track, and I and I pray for him as he goes to the Vatican. I think today, uh, and so that to me is is how how this what what should happen here. Do you believe that these leaders are trustworthy? Though? Do you believe that Look, I think I think I, I I'm not going to I don't know the I don't know the facts, but the facts need to come out. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, Sherman. Sh- Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Three percent Jewish. Well, I pronounce it correctly. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was good. Uh, uh, I'm curious what you think of the increasingly nasty tone of some of the ads, including the Super PAC, which you almost single-handedly have raised millions of dollars for. One ad accused tied up a, a Democrat who worked at a law firm to defending Muammar Gaddafi. Another one took aim at a hip-hop album a, a Democrat put out a decade ago. I'm curious your view on... on so first, uh, I legally cannot uh, co- contact a super PAC, any super PAC, about what they do or don't do on ads. So we are legally prohibited from discussing ads with super PACs, uh, even the NRCC. So having said all of that, I think you know me pretty well. Um, I abhor identity politics. I don't think identity politics is good for the country. I don't think it's good for society. Uh, and I think campaigns... Um, are most successfully run by talking about ideas. Uh, For instance, we have a really good record to run on. Look at the phenomenal ideas that we have put into place, and they're making a big difference in people's lives. And also, look at how far left the Democrats are going. They want to abolish ICE. They want to socialize medicine. They want to repeal all the economic policies that have made this economy great. So I think we've got a fantastic contrast to run on. Um, I will just leave it at that, that I don't think identity politics should be played by anybody at any time. I'll just leave it at that. So just to follow up on that, uh, yeah. if that super PAC is exploiting identity politics, in some cases, will you stop raising money you, for it? You can't, com- you can't legally coordinate with a super PAC. I want to save our majority. I'm going to do the things I can to save our majority and do it all by following exactly the campaign finance laws that we have. So. Uh, made that claim, and do you think he owes the families of the I don't know. apology? I, I'll just say what I just said, which is there is no reason to dispute these numbers, uh, and it's a function of this was a devastating storm that hit an isolated island, and that's really no one's fault. That is just what happened. Mini bus and the appropriations process. Um, the one that's on the floor today, Mark Walker, the chairman of the RSC, just put out a statement saying that Republican priorities were shut out across the board. And in the next round of appropriations, that conservatives would like to see their uh, policy priorities. Uh, would like to see their policy <laughs> priorities reflected, um, <coughs> like the writers there in the House bill. And unless this is done, many of their members will find it difficult to support this funding. Are you concerned about? getting um, conservative writers in these upcoming bills, especially the one that has like uh, I think we got a, a great amount of victories for our, our members. First of all, we're funding the VA Mission Act is, is a perfect example, done the way the House wanted to get it done. So we, when you're negotiating with two parties in four corners, you're not going to get everything you want. That is how negotiations and compromise and legislation works. But having said that, I think that this passed 94 to 5, what was is that? So I think the Senate vote sort of speaks for itself. Last uh, question. Chad. Uh, we talked about the, the storm here. I know last year when you guys moved supplemental <coughs> bills for Irma and Harvey, it went better than what happened with Hurricane Sandy before. And based on, on Lindsay's question, though, and some of these concerns expressed by conservatives and deficit spending, in this you know pending time of need as they assess the needs uh, after the hurricane here, do you think that the... Uh, it's turned a little bit towards these disaster relief bills. You know, you probably are going to have to do some supplemental if this bill is as, if this storm is as bad as it is, and that they moved past kind of what sidelined the Sandy bill a few years ago. Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, why? why? Well, I think I think if memory serves, there were there were things in the Sandy bill that a lot of members didn't think deserved to be in a disaster supplemental bill. Uh, those bills have been cleaned up since then. The the Harvey and Maria bills were what I would call much cleaner bills. Um, and also, uh, we have plussed up uh, the FEMA accounts. So right now, FEMA has money in the pipeline. So I think we're better prepared on the front end of this. Uh, you never know what's going to be needed until you've gone through the disaster. So uh, is it in the realm of possibility that we're going to have a supplemental? Of course it is, because disasters are just that. They're disasters that we don't predict. We have the DERF, the Disaster Relief Fund, 
um, that operates on rolling averages. But sometimes big storms exceed those averages, and then we appropriately respond. But with the last two supplementals, which these members are very involved in, I think we had much cleaner bills that were spoke, focused on getting the aid where it needed to. And more importantly, I think we we're doing a better job on mitigation, on trying to get infrastructure built. The word of bill is passing today, which is water infrastructure, which is one of our better way agenda items for infrastructure. But that also helps provide mitigation so that levees don't break, so that bayous are built, so that reservoirs are constructed, so that we don't have the kind of devastation we've had before. So I think we're in a much better place than we were back in the days of Sandy. Thank you.